We're here in Atlanta, Georgia at Delta, and we are gonna team up with their chefs to see how they make their food taste good at 30,000 feet in the air. We're gonna start the day off at Gate Gourmet to see how food is being prepped and packaged, ending the day at Delta's training facility to see how that food ends up on your tray table. I'm excited to get a taste of what Delta One customers have been eating this whole time. Welcome to Gate Group Thank and Delta you. Airlines. Thank yeah. You. The partnership we've had with Delta has been for probably about 20 years. So Gate Gourmet is essentially the caterer for Delta. Absolutely. You guys are providing the facility. All of the production, right. the, the menu development, okay. all of the food and beverage, everything that goes up above. I'll let Christian tell you a little bit more about how he works with his team on that. Cool. So where does this process begin? When you're coming up with a dish you want to put on the in-flight menu, what do you have to consider? And there are a lot of things. A lot of people you know, think that airline food is all frozen meals, but pretty much I would say 95% of everything is made fresh daily. It's just done in large volume. So we feed about 100,000 people a day, and we transport about a half million a day around the world. We have about 45 different menus that are flying currently. So Katie, today we're gonna to work on a, a salad that we're currently running on our menus. This is a harissa shrimp and arugula apple slaw. We've got a lot of great feedback on it from our oh, past. Great. We're just gonna roast some shrimp. We have sure. some 1620s here with the tails left on. We have some harissa. Harissa is a Tunisian pepper. One of the challenges with cooking for food that's gonna be served at altitude is the flavor. So as you, as you go up in altitude, the humidity actually reduces a little bit. And because you have reduced humidity, food doesn't taste as pronounced. We're going to need a little bit of some cilantro and then we need some salt and some olive oil. And then we're just going to take this lime here. Perfect. And All you right. just take these and stir that up, make sure it's well incorporated. You mentioned you've been getting really good feedback on this dish. We have. Are there yeah. some things that were just a no go? We're basically cooking food, we're having to chill it, and then we have to reheat it again once we're on the airplane. So it's that reheating piece that gets a little tricky with certain foods. For instance, right. You probably won't ever have a great French fry in an airplane. Right. So this gets roasted? It does, yep. And we only cook it for about eight minutes or so. We're cooking it all the way through, and then we're quickly going to blast chill it so the okay. shrimp stay nice and plump and right. juicy. So they're like a marinated shrimp right on top of the slaw, which we're going to make next. Cool. So what happens when there's a flight delay? I know that happens to me relatively often. Sure. So in airline lingo, we call it an IROP. That's when you have an interruption to the operation. There is a team that basically is assigned to wherever that is happening, and they're doing an assessment of all the different things that are going on. All of our food is held in a, in a refrigerated area prior to being dispatched to the flight. And we have very strict timelines that that can sit there before it becomes unusable. So the team will assess how long the IROP is potentially going to happen, and they're gonna make a decision whether or not the food can be served or if it needs to be remade. So are delays the worst thing that could happen in this scenario? Delays are one of the worst things that can happen in this scenario. This looks so good. Super so fresh, fresh nice and citrus, crunchy. Little bit of sweetness. It's gonna balance quite nicely with the harissa shrimp. So Katie, I've grabbed our roasted shrimp out of the oven. You can see how nice and moist that is. Now we're gonna put it in the blast chiller and cool it down very quickly. Cool, it smells so good. So what we're waiting on is our shrimp to cool down. I wanna show you another fun dish that we're working on, say rosemary brine chicken. And then we're gonna lay it out on a nice sheet pan and we're gonna roast it in the oven, get it nice and golden brown. How do different proteins get treated? Seafood versus steak versus poultry? We partially cook proteins that are whole muscles. So for instance, our steaks. Ah, okay. All of our proteins like chicken, pork, fish, and shrimp, they have to be cooked to the USDA, Completely. FDA guidelines. Yeah. So are you ever dealing with maybe part of your produce order doesn't show up or you have to substitute an ingredient, the romaine lettuce recall? Because yeah. um, I'd imagine every decision you're making is a huge decision. Last summer we had a crab cake shipment that was coming in as raw material to our plant in France and the order got held up in customs and it took almost four weeks for it to be released. Oh. We have printed menus that we're dealing with. We have folks that are expecting to get on a plane and be able to be served what they're gonna be ordering from the menu. So we had to make a very quick call to find out where can we find other sources of crab and how can we get that all together to the kitchens that need it. Now that we've cooked all of our proteins, our shrimp and our chicken today, we got a blast chilled down. We're gonna go ahead and plate up the salads. We'll put this on here. You wanna put about an ounce and a half of the slaw on top. And we are obviously scaling everything for a reason. That's it. How much of an impact would it have if I was like putting a little too much on <laughs> Really gonna mess up my production yeah. uh, because I'm gonna have to make more product. And then let's go ahead and put three shrimps on there. Beautiful. All right. 
and then we'll just finish that with a nice lime wedge on the side of the oh, plate. Oh, nice. So this is how it would go to the plate. It is. You can just put a lid on top of that. That'll be boarded on our tray setup, which we'll go see in just a little bit. Cool. It is cold in here. We are working in a giant refrigerator. That's it. We were in our hot foods area earlier. Now, after everything's cooked and cooled, it's brought here and it's assembled into the final dish. It'll be securely locked and it'll go out to the airfield. So we're going to go ahead and build that right on our tray setups. Over That's here? perfect. You can see how there's a little non-skid on there? Yes! It's, it's a very intricate balancing act to get all the equipment provisioned properly. This was a salad that was done earlier. Of course, we have our harissa shrimp. Here's our chicken setup. Yep, so we've had these ones pre-built. You can go ahead and take our chicken that we've cooked previously. Let's go ahead and load those into the container. We'll just go ahead and put a lid right on top of there. Squinch it down. Where are these headed after this? So these are gonna go into our oven. Uh, and then we're gonna stage these with the rest of the supplies and they will go out to the to the airplane. So you can see we have a very tight space to work within. So we're gonna go ahead and put our chicken right in here. And this is what our first class flight attendants that are in the galley, they're gonna actually remove these out and they're gonna plate this. What do you say we go taste the chicken and the shrimp? Let's do that. I'll bring this. <laughs> we have our harissa shrimp with our celery apple slaw. And we have our rosemary brine chicken with our cheesy polenta and broccolini with roasted I mean, tomatoes. It looks delicious. Let's... I'm gonna go shrimp first. Can I lime us? Yeah, please do. My favorite. Me too. <laughs> it's so good. It's so bright and clean. A little bit of spice, a little bit of brightness and acidity. It's everything I want, basically. Perfect. <laughs> well, let's dig into that chicken and see how that tastes. I'm gonna get a little bit of everything very tender. The vegetables are cooked perfectly. They're not overcooked. There's a little bit of bite still. Very good. So in the air, it wouldn't taste like this, right? I'll teach you a little trick that uh, we kind of do to see how we think things will taste. Let's go ahead and cut a little piece of shrimp here. Hold your nose. Eat the shrimp. Swallow. And then let go. It's still delicious. Yeah. <laughs> but do you see but the difference? Is it is a little muted. Yeah. Holding my nose is like perfect balance. Yeah. Like, I think what most people would consider well seasoned. So that's, that's really what, cool. That's what the effect of the less humidity has on your on your wow. flavor profile. That, it's a big difference. Yeah. It's Changed impressive. your mind on airline it's, catering? Huh? It most definitely has. I am impressed. We're going to take you now out to one of our aircraft and let you see how the flight attendants actually deliver this experience to our customers in the galley. Oh my gosh, great. Welcome to our mock aircraft simulator room. Thank you. I just came from the Gate Gourmet kitchen and walking into this room was a surprise <laughs> to see an entire airplane. You're going to take me through a little bit about what goes on on board during meal service. Let's go. Uh, this is a real 767 galley, first class galley. And these are all of our ovens. All of our ovens are convection. We don't have microwaves nice. on board. Yeah. When I get on board the aircraft, our caterers have generally been on and catered the aircraft with all of our tools, all of the food necessary for the flight. After takeoff, we turn our meals on to cook, and by the time we're ready to serve them, they're perfectly cooked. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. So here's one chicken. All right, so the chefs have gone to a great service for us as far as telling us exactly how to put everything on our plate. Is the broccolini on the center of wow. the it's left so of the specific. plate? It is, it is. <laughs> everything is intentional, I've noticed, throughout my day today. So chicken to the left. Chicken I'm to the trying left. Trying to make mine look like yours. A little bit on top of the potatoes. Okay. And then we're gonna just drizzle the finish, which is the thyme gravy, mm -hmm. and voila. It looks just as good as it did in the kitchen. <laughs> you did a Freshly great job. Made. Thank you so much for kind of walking me through a day in the life, <laughs> really. Well, thanks for helping me in the galley. <laughs> it was such a pleasure to have you on board with us today. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. For more how to make it, click here.